You know, I spent the first 15 years of my career building a silo. Uh, and I was taught that. I was taught that at uni. I was taught that at my job. So I was taught that at work. I was taught to take the, take the architectural drawings, take the drawings that you have, work, take it into a silo and work in that silo. And that's what I've done for the last 15 years. Well, that's what I did for the first 15 years of my career. And the, the last five years and maybe a bit more, and for the rest of my career, I'm gonna take that silo and I'm gonna knock it down. That silo is what kills our industry. The more and more I work through this, the more and more I do integrated design, the more and more I work in great ecosystems with great people, the more I realize that the less I work in the silo, the better. The more transparent I am about what I do. And the key to this, I think, is that we are threatened by people that might know what we do. And the more and more I learn, the more and more I become comfortable, I suppose, the more and more I become confident about my job, the less and less I believe that. I actually believe that we should allow people in to the design. We should allow people to assist with the design. You know, I, I do uh, presentations for year three, four, five, and six at primary schools. And I ask them, you know, what would happen if I bring a herd of elephants into the, into the hall? What would happen if I take a herd of elephants and put them on the roof? You know, the day, one day I was there and it was really windy and I said to them, what loads should we put on this building? You know, these are, these are primary school children and they all know the answers, right? Structural engineering is not a secret. It's not magical. It's the, the technical number crunching is important, but the actual understanding and the philosophy is not magical and everyone should contribute. And it's amazing what people, when you let them into your world, when you let them into the structural engineering and let them help you with the structural engineering, it's amazing how that will contribute. It's amazing what emerges from those conversations, probably things that you don't imagine. And actually it's that naivety, in fact, sometimes that is the trigger for clever thinking. I just got out of a meeting with for 36 May Street, St. Peter's, and the builder came up with some two amazing ideas. And I had preconceived about what the solution would be because it's a, it's a complicated project. And I had preconceived what the concept, concept would be. And that is not at all what I was thinking. And it was, it was just an off the cuff comment that he mentioned, Frank said, well, why don't we do this? And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant, right? And I, I think we're, to work in silos, we're denying that. We cannot be threatened by other people contributing to the structure. And just like we should allow ourselves to contribute to the architecture and you know, work in that ecosystem where we're all contributing together, that is collaboration. It's not about cooperation, right? Where we're all working, yes, for a common goal, but working independently in the silos, that's cooperation, but it's collaboration where we're all contributing to the design and when we all own it.